Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, here to help you become an expert primary maths teacher so that all your children become fluent, creative and confident with their maths. This is the fifth video in this series on teaching children who are six to seven years old. In this video, I'll explain what the mathematical structure of array is and why it is so important. Then I'll talk about how we use it to give children a deep understanding of the commutativity of multiplication how we use it to make sure that they have a deeply connected and thorough understanding of division and how we use it to help them deeply understand odd and even numbers and reason about what happens when you add odd and even numbers. Right, let's get started by talking about what the structure of array is. I haven't even explained that yet. So array is just organising objects in rectangles. And as we get more into array, those objects tend to just become squares on paper. So there is an array that's three rows and each row is five squares wide. But it could be shown with three rows of five objects laid out on a table. And at primary school age, this is the universal structure for multiplication and division that's going to bring everything together and make sense of it all. Just as part, part, whole is the universal structure for addition and subtraction. So let's just briefly review part, part, whole so you can get the context for the power of array. So with a part, part, whole structure, we came to understand that addition is just a situation where we have parts and we're trying to puzzle out how big the whole is. And subtraction is just a situation where you know the whole and you know one of the parts and you're trying to find the mystery part, the one that you've not been told. And part, part, whole is so powerful because it, it unites the idea that subtraction can be take away. We can start with this quantity and take away that quantity and we'll be left with this mystery part that we want to know. But it can also be counting on. We can start here, count on until we get to there, and we get the mystery part as well. And you can think of subtraction as just being finding a missing part when you're given a total, or the missing number in an addition. It all fits together when you think about addition and subtraction as being part, part, whole. An array does the same for multiplication and division. So this intrinsically is the multiplication of three by five. And I'm not going to get hung up on which order we write multiplications in just now because people will have endless fights about that. But this is three by five. There's your three, there's your five. And if you count up the number of squares in this case or objects, if you're doing this with objects, it's 15, therefore the answer to that multiplication is 15. So multiplication is shown by a rectangle where the numbers you're multiplying are the lengths of the sides and your answer is the total number of objects or squares in your rectangle. But it also shows division. Now that's a bit of a tricky idea most people haven't come across. So when I'm running live training, I usually give teachers 15 Dean's blocks, ask them to put them on their table and close their eyes and divide those 15 blocks by three. And in a room full of teachers, you'll get different solutions as you can see here in this picture. Some teachers will divide by sharing the blocks into three equal groups of five and will find that the answer is five. But some teachers will group the blocks in threes and say that the answer is five because there are five groups of three blocks. So if you're watching this video, you need to convince yourself that there are two ways of modeling division. One is to share the total number of things into the number of groups that you're dividing by and to look at the size of a group. And the other is to share the total number of things into groups the size of the number that you're dividing by and to count the number of groups. Now lots of teachers come to be teachers without really securely realising that. And it's essential you take time to wrestle with it. Fluent mathematicians as adults, if you gave them a calculation like 2,800 divided by two, 
they're going to use the sharing fairly. They're going to pull that 2,800 apart into two equal groups of 1,400. It's so inefficient to try and count twos. Whereas if you gave them a question like 60 divided by 20, they're going to say how many 20s in 60? It was three. So lots of adults shift between the two models without realising they're doing it. And that's so confusing to children. It's why children really struggle with division. So my next step for exploring division with teachers when I'm running live training is to take 15 cards and I tend to use my baby animal top trumps when I'm running training for teaching this age group because kids this age love these particular top trumps. Baby animal ones, can't recommend them highly enough back with the session on array. So when we're talking about the division of 15 by three, I'll take 15 cards and I will deal them out like this. And I will ask teachers, what am I doing? Am I counting groups of three? Or am I sharing them fairly into three groups? And some teachers will see this as five groups of three. And some teachers will see it as three groups of five, we've done sharing fairly, and some teachers will see immediately that it's both at the same time. And that is the power of array. It unites the ideas of division being sharing fairly. We shared them into three groups of five, counting groups of three, there are five groups of three. And at a deeper level than that, if we look at this question 15 divided by three, we can simply say we've got 15 squares, one side of the rectangle is three, how long is the other side if the total number of squares is 15? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, here we go. So that was three, and this is five, and we're back to our multiplication. So with multiplication, we were given the three and the five and we had to find the 15. With division, we were given the 15 and the 3, and we had to find the 5. So division is also a missing number in a multiplication. And that brings us back to our addition and subtraction part, part, whole model. We had a single model that pulled addition and subtraction together. Now we've got one that pulls together multiplication and division. A single diagram that will show you a whole calculation family. That shows you 3 times 5 is 15. It also shows you five times three is 15. If you look at it the other way round, it shows you 15 divided by three is five. If you're given your 15 squares and you know one side is three and you puzzle out the other, and it shows you 15 divided by five, if you're given the 15 squares and the five, you puzzle out the three, they're all in that single diagram. And that's true for every multiplication and division family. And we'll be using array for teaching maths so far into the future, certainly right through primary maths, right through topics like long multiplication, multiplication of fractions, lots of the work on mental multiplication and division. I certainly use it when I'm teaching expanding quadratic brackets, it's the same idea. And it is at this age, age six to seven, when some children become totally lost because they're trying to share fairly and their teacher is making the assumption that they are counting groups or vice versa. And the teacher doesn't know that they need to slow down and unite those two vastly different ideas of doing division. Right, so now you've got a good idea of what array is, let's look at how we use it to teach maths really well to this age group of children. So as children start to work on their tables, a typical barrier they'd come across would be where a teacher asks them what are 10 twos and they're expected to know that it's 20 because two tens are 20 and that's such a big idea now when we were working with the counting beads i emphasized the importance of working on pairs of multiplications and discovering the surprise of two tens giving you the same answer as 10 twos and the surprise that that's always the case, no matter what the multiplication is. Now we're working with array, we can make sense of it all. If we look at an array, it's clear that five twos are the same as two fives. 
All you have to do is this. And all of a sudden, you can do amazing things like 10 threes. That's a really hard calculation for children who are this old. But three tens, if they've been working on their counting in tens, they will know is 30. So they can see that 10 threes are 30 just by looking at it this way and seeing that 10 threes are three tens. So whenever you flip the order of a multiplication to make it easier, you need to slow down, rebuild this imagery with children, and you ask them, I just flipped the order of the multiplication. Why could I do that? And they'll tell you, because of this. And you can get whole classes of children doing this, and you know that they understand what you're talking about, and so do they, and that's just great. That's what we expect from children of this age. So that's the commutativity of multiplication. Now, finally, there's one other thing that I want to explain, and that is that children of this age struggle far more with odd and even numbers than most teachers imagine. I really discovered this when my son was five years old, and he said that he'd been doing odd and even numbers at school, and he'd been doing it with butterfly pictures and ladybirds, and looking at the symmetry of even numbers, that even numbers are two groups the same size and he really deeply understood it his teacher had done it with him in many situations but his friend who'd been at a different school was sitting there in the room and she she just looked really confused she said that's not what even numbers are even numbers are an exact number of twos like when you've got pairs of socks or when you've got a group of children and you want them to line up in pairs and it works out exactly. And the two children just looked at each other and they were totally confused with what each other was saying. Because even numbers are both those things. They do split in half and they do break into an exact number of twos. But how do you make sense of all that together? So with a class that have already come across odd and even numbers some time ago, but as their teacher now, I might not know how they understand it. I would give them these numbers that are in rectangles that are too wide and some that have an extra square on the top. And I would ask them to sort them into the odd and the even numbers. And then I'd ask them to explain how they did it. And we could draw attention to the fact that even numbers do split into two precisely equal groups, but they are also an exact number of twos. And they are both those things at the same time. And at this stage in their education, I would make sure we did some activities where children were required to understand odd and even numbers in both ways. You might have a group of children in the hall, you might count them and you might ask them to get into pairs and say, will you be able to get into pairs? And link the prediction of the results to, the, to whether or not your number was even or odd. And then you could do an activity where they have to get into two equal groups. And the same thing applies. So you're connecting up those bits of maths. And then what it's lovely to do is to get children to reason about adding odd and even numbers. So if you add two even numbers, will you get an even number or an odd number or can't you tell? And if they've securely got this kind of imagery, they're going to be able to see it. Now, children who haven't got the imagery as a ray can normally see it if they've got the model of even numbers that's about pairs because they can see the pairs and they can see if they put together pairs and pairs, they get a total set of pairs. Whereas the children who split their numbers in half often can't really reason in that way. And you can go further. What happens if you add an odd number of children to an odd number of children? Well, will you get an odd number of children? If you can see this, or you can imagine your two lone children who aren't in pairs in the different groups meeting up and making a pair, then you can begin to do this wonderful, wonderful maths. One thing before I leave this is that you need to link this to division by two. So division by two can be done by halving it and finding the size of one group or by counting the numbers of twos. Most pre-written schemes of work put odd and even numbers and division by two together. 
And some teachers don't know why, because they see division by two one way, perhaps splitting into two equal groups, and they see even numbers the other way, in this case, counting pairs, or vice versa. So for both division by two and for working with even numbers, you and your children need to be able to see this structure, that your even number splits in half exactly, and it's an exact number of twos. Once you've got all that secure with your children, you can have so much fun doing awesome maths and really impressing people. And all your children can access that because they can all move paper. And so they can all see what happens when you add an even and an odd number and talk about that. And of course, they can move in the hall. They can be a crocodile that looks like that or like that, depending on whether you've got an odd or an even number of children. So your takeaways from this video are that array is an incredibly important structure of maths. I talk about there being six key structures of maths, age seven to 11. They are base 10, number lines, the part, part, whole model, array, proportion bar, and circular fraction. If children have got those six maps of number securely in their imagination, they are gonna fly. But array is the one that's least understood. So array is objects in rectangles and it unites all multiplication and division. You can see multiplication division fact families in single diagrams. In this video, I've explained how that unites the idea of division being sharing fairly and the idea of division being counting groups. I've explained how we now teach the commutativity of multiplication using array. And I've talked about how the idea of array can deeply help the work we do to teach children about odd and even numbers. If you have any comments or questions about this video, please do post them. I'd love to know what you're thinking. Or you can always come and chat to me in my Facebook group, which is Expert Primary Maths Teaching. If you think this is useful, please do share it with your colleagues. This world needs everyone to be a great mathematician. Thank you so much for caring enough to watch these videos so that you can help make sure every one of your children becomes brilliant at maths. Hope to see you again soon, perhaps for the next video in this series, which will be all about introducing base 10 materials with this age group. Bye for now.